Hey everyone, I'm Mark, and today we're going to have a quick look at the best places to buy your add-ons for Flight Sim 2020 and 2024, because there are a ton of options out there, and picking the right one is more important than you might think. First off, if you're on Xbox, unfortunately, you can stop watching right now because you won't have any choice but to buy from the marketplace since there's no way to install anything from anywhere else but there. The situation on PC, on the other hand, is quite different. And even though your instinct might be to go to the marketplace, since it's a quick and easy way to get add-ons, there are some pretty compelling reasons to look elsewhere. Most add-ons get updates either for bug fixes or improvements after their initial release, and if you're going through the marketplace, you're going to wait around a whole lot longer to receive those updates, making it especially problematic for new releases since bug fixes can happen frequently. The turnaround time between when a developer sends an update to Microsoft and the time it's actually published on the marketplace has varied a bit over the last few years, but with the process that's in place right now, I doubt that it'll ever be anywhere near as fast as a direct purchase. Another downside is that add-ons on the marketplace can be encrypted, so you can't apply any modifications to the add-on yourself, and you won't have access to any configuration options for the add-on either, and that can be important in the case of sceneries. These often have settings to enable or disable parts of the scenery, like the static aircraft, cargo equipment, and even changing the resolution of the assets. So being able to access these settings is important since it can give you a performance boost if your PC is struggling. From a monetary point of view, selling on the marketplace means the developer gets less revenue for each sale, but it also makes it easily available to way more people, so overall it's still worthwhile for them to have it on the marketplace. You could also make the argument that buying from there also encourages Microsoft to continue to invest more in Flight Sim in the years to come since it's the main way they create recurring revenue from Flight Sim, but as we're going to see, I only buy things from there in one specific situation. What the marketplace does give you on the other hand is a central location where you can buy and manage all of your add-ons and the update process is all integrated into Flight Sim as well, so that definitely makes things easier for you. However, pretty much the only time that I buy from the marketplace is if an add-on is only available there. So if we take Flight FlightFX for example, who created the Piaggio P180, the marketplace is your only place to buy it, so in that case you just don't have a choice. Most developers, on the other hand, do publish their add-ons elsewhere, either directly on their own website or on a third-party marketplace, of which there are a few of them that we'll look at in just a bit. Developers typically distribute their apps with an installer that will put all of the files needed to run the add-on in the community folder, which is the special folder in Flight Sim that's meant specifically for external add-ons. To make it a little bit easier for you to keep everything up to date and ready to go with just a couple button presses, depending on the complexity of the add-on, it might actually come with additional tools to manage updates and or liveries that go with the plan. Oftentimes though, you need to open the application to be notified of an update, so contrary to the marketplace, the burden's now on you to keep your add-ons up to date, but having quick access to them more than makes up for it if you ask me. For things that are updated regularly, like Navigraph's data integration into the different planes, it's worth checking before you start Flight Sim to make sure that you have the latest bits installed, because it's a bit annoying to get everything started up, only to realize that you forgot to update something. Some add-on developers also run their storefronts as a third-party marketplace, like Just Flight and INI Builds do, so it gives smaller developers another place to publish their add-ons, and it takes away the burden of having to run their own store. Black Square is a good example of this. They make great general aviation add-ons, and while a few of them are available on the marketplace in 2020, most of them are only in the Just Flight store. In terms of where I look first for an add-on, I'd say Just Flight is number one, not only because I've never had any issues buying there, but also because they make and distribute some of the most underrated add-ons for Flight Sim. There are a few more third-party markets too, like Contrail, Orbex, Inibuilds, Sim Market, and Aerosoft, and some content will often be on multiple platforms so you can buy where you prefer, but the order that I just mentioned is where I typically look first. 
if you end up buying a lot of add-ons, it's easy to lose track of where you bought what. So one thing you can do is keep track of them with a basic spreadsheet that lists all of your add-ons and where you bought them so that you're never left wondering where you got something from. One thing that the in-game marketplace has going for it is that it frequently has sales on at almost every major public holiday, and you can get stuff anywhere between 5 to 20% off sometimes, which can be pretty hard to resist. The good news is that some developers actually allow you to transfer the license from the in-game marketplace to their own store, so you can buy it at a discount on the marketplace and then switch it to their store to get access to additional tools and features like we were talking about earlier. It definitely lets you get the best of both worlds, but not every add-on developer supports doing that, so you'll want to confirm that it's something that's accepted before buying it on the marketplace. A lot of third-party markets also have their own sales from time to time, and the best way to keep up with those is just to be subscribed to their newsletters or even just having an account to get the promotional emails, and like that, you won't miss out on your chance to get something for less. One aspect that none of these stores have though, which Microsoft plans to introduce into 2024, is the ability to rent planes and try before you buy, which is something that could be useful, but it hasn't been enabled yet as far as I can tell. There isn't a lot of great content available on the 2024 marketplace at the moment anyways, but once there is, I'd probably consider a rental for something that I'm on the fence about and then probably buy it elsewhere if I end up liking it. Speaking of which, something you need to be careful of if you're using 2024 is whether the add-on is actually fully functional for it, because even though we were told most add-ons would be day one compatible, here we are six months later and there are only a handful of add-ons that are officially supported. There are a few different tiers of compatibility for 2024 right now, with the first of them being add-ons that quite literally don't work, and if you were to try them, you'd end up having more issues than is worth the trouble. Then we have those that aren't officially supported but do work, like say the Phoenix A320 family or the A2A Comanche, and there's a fair bit of add-ons that fall into this group, but just keep in mind that you can still have some minor issues that you'll need to work around. Next, we have those that are officially compatible, and oftentimes these will be from official partners since they've had access to the SDK for longer, like a lot of ionized planes and sceneries. The last two groups are the enhanced add-ons that use some of 2024's new features, of which there are only a couple so far. And lastly, we have native 2024 only add-ons, and as far as I know, there aren't any of these around yet. That covers what you need to know for paid add-ons, but one thing to keep in mind is there are also equally as many free add-ons, especially when it comes to tools and liveries, but also for scenery, airplanes, and everything else in between. The single best place to start when it comes to free add-ons is flightsim.to, and for the most part, what you download from there will be a simple copy and paste into the community folder to bring it into FlightSim. Some tools like, say, Skydolly or Gs are either going to have you install them or run them as an executable, and one thing that you'll likely run into is Windows throwing some warnings that it doesn't trust certain applications you download from there. This happens in part because the executables aren't signed with a certificate, but I've never actually heard of a virus or malware making its way onto FlightSim.to, so long as you download add-ons that have good ratings and lots of downloads, you should be fine. Where you can run into trouble though is with add-ons that aren't fully compatible and they can potentially cause FlightSim to crash, so if you start to experience instability, you'll have to experiment with removing add-ons to see what might be causing it. Managing your add-ons and the community folder is a whole separate topic onto its own though, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that in a future video. And on your way out, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to get more similar content to this one.